Hey everyone, Christian Ludemann here. Uh, in this module, we're going to talk about locking and debugging and see how we can set tools up and how we can follow a systematic approach for debugging and squashing bugs that inevitably will come in Angular applications. So here's what we're going to cover. We're going to look at the logging tools, how to set up uh, some tools for logging with uh, Sentry and how that would look like in terms of a dashboard and how you use that on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we will look more into deeper edge cases because sometimes even with the data you get from the logging tools, it can be kind of hard to uh, find the cause. So I'll show you my scientific approach to debugging and solving hard to solve bugs. So let's get started. So regarding the logging tools, uh, you want to have a tool like I explained in the logging uh, module where you get notified about errors. It correlates between different services, your BFF, your other infrastructural points uh, and nodes in your architecture. Um, so you can see uh, the cause and effect of everything in your architecture. You only want to see the relevant state as well, like the app state and what the user did to provoke a certain error. Um, there are tools that can even make a replay of this uh, session that caused the error, such as Sentry, which is a tool I like to use. Uh, it's kind of session capture and also it has a nice management board for managing bugs and you can see bugs coming in, you can handle as a team, you can uh, assign it to, uh, to your team in Slack and get notifications and you have a like a support desk for, for when bugs comes in and users can even provide additional info with a dialogue. And so you get as much data as possible to fixing the bugs. So yeah, Sentry, uh, it gives you both data in terms of errors that occurred in the app and performance monitoring uh, and profiling. So you can see, for example, slow requests or slow function execution. Uh, you can get notified about that. Users can provide feedback in a dialog box upon error. They can, for example, tell you not only can you see in the session capture what happened, where it is all recorded, but also the user can provide extra information like I did this, I did this, whatever, you know, how they want to describe what happened. It's best to get notified automatically rather than the customer having to call your customer service uh, to report these problems. You want to have it integrated in in a nice system like this so you can fix them as fast as possible so they don't linger around in production for too long. So let's look into uh, Sentry, how that could be set up. So normally uh, you will look at this primarily. Uh, you have these here, you can see, for example, there's a new problem coming in here. There's an error response for this API error. I can see unknown error. So there's ATP failure response, and you can see full trace. And let's see what else we can see. There's no replay for this one. It's an error response. So, and then we can see, for example, this one as well, review uh, what we have. This with a dialogue message to grabbing the error, and we have a replay uh, here where we can, you know, get a replay of, of what happened uh, when the error occurred. So that helps you, and you have a way of tracking it. You can even go and assign it to a team member here. You can go and be like, this should be handled by this team or this person, and you can connect it to make a GitHub issue, uh, Azure DevOps issue, Slack integrations has a bunch of integrations like that. And then performance wise, you can also see performance metrics, such as last contentful paint and how the fast paint the page loads. And you can also set up uh, like you see consuming queries and even JavaScript profiling for functions that are maybe slow to execute user feedback. You can even collect uh, user feedback. So if you want like, yeah, like you saw here, when you can write some user feedback, you can run cron jobs and alerts. So there's a bunch of, it's a very nice uh, way and you can have your general you know, dashboard here where you can see whatever you need to see for the team. You can for example, have a front end dashboard where it contains performance metrics and slows page loads and errors. And you can see like how many errors uh, has occurred in a certain time frame. Maybe you can even set up an alert when a certain amount of errors occurs in a certain time frame, then you get notified. Uh, stuff like this that you know you might want to have on a screen in your office uh, to always look at the metrics, how you're doing, if the app is still functioning as it should. So I would recommend having this, having like a on the shelf solution rather than building your own like Elk stack, because even with Kibana, Elk stack is a little bit limited in terms of this, like the, how you can do replays on this. That's, that's a really nice feature. So this center is really built to, to make it as easy as possible to capture the user state and actions to provoke a certain error. And it has a nice support desk feel to how you can 
review and assign team members and, and handle bugs this way and even create bugs from here in your all in all it's a really nice tool um that i recommend and but sometimes you know it's not so easy to fix bugs uh, and sometimes you 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 need more than just the data here you need to follow a certain scientific approach because sometimes just looking at the error message it might be misleading or it might be caused by other conditions or other actions the user had previously taken it could be related to something specific to that user maybe some extensions we have installed or certain environment conditions you know hardware time zone differences all kinds of stuff that is unique to the user or just the the actions the user had or the user's data they have that makes it fail so we cannot always rely on the user's report to just reproduce it because you might not be able to reproduce what made one user fail because it might be something that's specific to that user but we can create hypotheses based on this data what we can, which we can work from. So the scientific approach to do is first we look at something like Sentry or Locking Dashboard and we see the data coming in, we see the errors and we, we get as much as we can extract from the errors and we, if we can fix it straight from the error, that's perfect. Then, uh, you know, then we already can solve the problem. But if it's a hard to solve the problem, we need to work a bit deeper with it. So from there, you would use your existing knowledge, you know, about software development, your framework, you're working with your, your third party libraries, and the error data you're getting in, and you will form some hypothe hypothesis that you will uh, you'll then test later. And um, because you want to be targeted, because you can you can test a million different things, but you want to be kind of targeted with what you know. And then you for you test all these hypotheses, and either one of those hypotheses are gonna solve the problem, and then you got your solution, or you at least you know. From there, you, you, you know, probably, you know, you can either do a workaround for that or you can find alternatives if it's a certain uh, third party library that causes a problem. But at least you, you know the cause of the problem, which is the, the first step of fixing it. And if none of those hypotheses works, then you would use that as input to going on another loop, another cycle, uh, go back to step one, you learn, you create a hypothesis and you test. And you do that until it's fixed. But sometimes it'll be a few loops so where for each hypothesis if it doesn't solve it then at least you know that these things didn't work so that's at least some data you have accumulated and um, so an example would be like the log tells us that the app is crashing when going to the transaction page of a banking app after you have visited the investment page that's what we see when we look at the, the replay uh, of the state that they have visited investments first and that's what we see maybe as well when we try it ourselves uh, locally uh, and it's some null reference error from a third party library. So we created a hypothesis that this third party uh, library is causing a problem. We, uh, we test it, we try to remove the library and see if it works. If it works, then we know it's something with the library. So we do a bug report to the third party library repository. We would try a workaround that could fix this problem without going and intervening with the third party library. Uh, sorry. Or we would just find an alternative library if it's something we can easily replace. This is a big problem. We don't see like the libraries maintained properly to be to be fixed in the repository. And if it's still not working after removing the library, well, then you at least know that it's not the library that's causing the problem and it might be something deeper. So you might look deeper in the stack trace and see actually if it's just showing in the library this error, it might be because the library triggers some change detection or something, but the real problem is, you know, something deeper you look at. So uh, that's just gonna give you more knowledge on the next iteration of this scientific scientific uh, debugging approach. And sometimes your hypothesis is very abstract. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, for example, oftentimes you see in, in WordPress development, for example, that, you know, some part of the application just doesn't work and you have all these third-party libraries. So the easiest way to fix this or find out the cause is you do a binary search uh, basically that means you remove half of the libraries and then you remove half again. So you go down to one third, then one eighth, then one sixteenth until the problem is fixed. Uh, because that way you, you know at least first like what half of the libraries are causing the problem and then you can add, use this approach to diagnose the exact library that's causing problems. So do like a, a binary search uh, approach to, uh, to eliminating the causes rather than just randomly trying stuff. 
So this is what we call it, logging tools. Uh, you can either do the uh, approach lined out in the logging uh, module, or you can uh, look into something like Sentry, which I recommend using a dedicated uh, approach uh, or solution for this, that you can do uh, session capture. It's very helpful, as well as having a management dashboard for bug handling that they can easily integrate with your uh, task board. And follow a scientific approach to the hard to uh, debug uh, box so you all the time you know if you need to learn more if you so you can form better hypothesis and then you can test the hypothesis for you because you're always doing one of these three things and then after you're just feeding itself in a loop so and then you find the you find a solution or at least you find the cause in the end you will always find a cause sometimes you sometimes solutions are hard but you will find a cause because you can always Go down to the exact library or the exact thing that is giving causing the problems, and then you will look at workarounds on them. Or you just need to learn more than to maybe get, go even deeper, so you know, like iteratively, how you need to to learn no more to fix a problem. Which is how I recommend you you learn you learn to uh, to fix a specific thing as you go along. That that might be the time where you need to learn more about Angular change detection or some deeper knowledge of the of the framework that goes beyond just the the usage aspect of a framework. So some resources, you can re visit the logging lesson or you can build your own logging tool uh, or check out a Sentry tool like that to uh, also support this error session capturing. Otherwise, see you in Discord.